publishing in English. That's that's the language that we're publishing in, and that's the environment that we're, we're that's that's it. So our next step in that conversation, because we want to honor, not just honor, but give voice to um, the indigenous voices, is is translation. So translation is one thing. Translation has limitations, but translation is a wonderful way to 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 um, uh, to, to protect and to, to at least keep alive the conversation with another language. So our policy typically is this. If we're translating from a European language, whether it's from the French or the Portuguese or so on, we will do straight translations, and the book we publish will be entirely in English. But if we're, pub if we're translating from an indigenous language in somewhere in Africa, we'll publish in both languages. right? So we'll publish the original language, whether it's airway, and then beside it, we'll pu publish the translation. This is a this is a it's it's a bigger book, but what it does is it's our way to create a mechanism for the the perpetuation of the other of, of, of the other language, um, but a less economically risky way of doing it because then, um, but also for many indig even people who speak like Ewe or or, or Swahili or Kikuyu and so on, having it they are also multilingual people so having these two translations beside each other can be a really dynamic and exciting thing. So that's one of the things that we're doing. Then we are partnering with organizations run by people like Habiba Badarun in South Africa and so on, who have started translation entities, translation organizations to translate from Kosa from, and from the different languages in South Africa. And so we are partnering with them to create mechanisms for them, for their national agenda of publishing work and protecting the languages in those societies. So there's a limit to what we can do, but we feel that we can contribute to this effort by at least translating the work that is published in that language. And it helps to sustain the publishing entity in that language because, of course, we have to pay subvention, you know, some costs um, to translate the work, especially if the work has already been published somewhere. So that helps to sustain it. Um, so translation is one of the, the sort of pragmatic ways in which you, you can sustain that. Um, and of course, translation then introduces scholars in the field, um, and scholars who can then talk about what happens across these languages and what, what is going on in the aesthetics, what's going on in the cosmologies that they are creating, and so on. Um, so, so I find hope in that, but, but a lot of that work also has to happen within these different countries. Um, and you know, there, there are limits to what, what we can do. But it's a, it's a great question and it's one that has exercised us. You, there's one outfit that I think is worth going to. It's called the, the Badalisha Poetry Exchange. Um, and if you haven't been there, it's, it's, on a, it's a website. It's based in Cape Town. It's a fantastic website of African poets. And they have the poetry in indigenous languages, in English, in, in all the so for Europe, and they do translations and so on. And they have the voices, they record the voices and so on. You should go there. It's like a it's like a, a fantasy time of just African poets from all over the place. Um, so to just look at the Badalisha Poetry Exchange and they they've, they've been doing fantastic work. Yeah. We have a question over here. Sorry. Thanks. Um, you've touched upon you know preserving the cultural integrity of and the work and more opportunities for writers. Kind of in the era of kind of artificial intelligence, are you <coughs> concerned and do you see this software, especially software that can be trained to produce work in the voice of writers, do you see that as a threat or do you see there as being the possibilities to effectively train it to help with translation or to even keep the voices of some writers alive? Like, do you see AI as being a threat or do you see it as a friend to the writer? No, no, I, I don't, I don't, I don't have the energy to see it as a threat. Um, but, but listen, okay. Here's, here's a little secret. APBF could not exist without, without technology. It, it, it wouldn't have. Technology is what has, has, has made this possible. That board that I told you about, we've never met physically. Not one. We met during COVID on Zoom. As a group, we've never actually physically met. We meet on email, we communicate back and forth, we send things back and forth. All these poets that you see emerging, they're getting into journals all over the world. You know why? Because of the technological shift that has taken place with publishing. It's called Submittable. 
translation work, anybody who is doing translation, even the most esoteric translator, will, will not admit it. But they're using AI to double check stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. And AI is, Google Translate is AI. All the translation systems, that's AI. So the question that we have to ask ourselves is, look, AI is, is, can be every one of these mechanisms can be perniciously dangerous. I, the one that I fear more is the algorithm system. That, that one is creating what is happening in America today. Mm -hmm. The si siloing of people. Mm -hmm. The echo chamber of all these ways of thinking and so on, without dialogue and so on and so forth. AI, AI is 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 sometimes we we are we, we have a narrow view of AI as if it's like a new thing. <laughs> but AI has been going on for a long time, and you're using it like it's not like it's not like it's, it's not, that's the way it should be. So 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 I'm not I'm not worried about it in that sense. But as 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 a teacher, I am training my students. That, that these tools do not automatically um, serve as a mechanism to, 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 to create something. So some people say, well, if AI can make a poem as good as my poem, how would you feel about that? Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I would love to see it. <laughs> because I'm, I'm pretty good. You know? <laughs> Uh, my question is a bit of a flip, perhaps, of the first question. And um, you talked early on about um, finding distribution in African countries. But how do you go about getting people interested in the write writing of African writers who aren't of African descent? Now, I think if you put a label on anything, I mean, you can see today, this is Africa rights, and most of the people here are probably of African descent. And that happens, you know, whether that label is African, Jewish, disabled, the people who turn up, or the people who identify with that. So how do you reach beyond that? What do you mean? <laughs> to to um, appeal and sell those books that you're publishing to people who uh, don't have the same culture and the same heritage, but are going to be, how do you get them interested in African writers? Well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you a story. I grew up reading Shakespeare, Enid mm -hmm. Blyton, <laughs> um, the Hardy Boys, all that. You know, Bobby Twins, Five Fine Daughters, Jennings, Following the Clue, <laughs> and. Um, and that's because I like to read. But that was what was available to me. And then one day I discovered Spratt Morrison from Jamaica. And he looked like me. He ate the same fish that I ate. This is a book by a woman called Jean, Jean, Jean Acosta. And I just thought, this is a miracle. All of a sudden, I can see myself there. This did not reduce my engagement with Jennings and Enid Blyton, but it made me think a different way about my conversations with them. I think, I think that I don't have to work. If, if, if literature is made available, people who are interested in the literature will read it. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? So, so I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, I'm creating African poetry for, for, for poets who are African, but also I'm, my, my goal is to make the world sort of discover this work because we, we are bringing real change to the writing of other writers because they are encountering this stunning aesthetic that they didn't even know about. So this is not a problem to me. I, I, I'm struggling to see what the challenge is. Um, because if, if, if non-Africans say, I'm just never going to read an African book, 
I can't help you. <laughs> that, that's, that's such a conscious decision that you've really thought about. <laughs> and there must be some other reason that you came to that conclusion. You see what I'm saying? And the problem has never been that. You see, this is the thing that I want people to understand. It. The problem has never been that, that non-Africans are not interested in African work. The problem has been somebody saying, we don't know if it will sell enough. Mm-hmm. And then, and then, and then it sells, and then all of a sudden. <laughs> so, anyway, the, the only other thing I can say to you is hip hop. <laughs> I will add, though, I mean, that, that's a very generous answer. <laughs> 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 there is a willful push yeah. against the work of Africans mm-hmm. and diaspora people and black people. Yeah. It has been devalued. It has been, we, we are now in a country yeah. where those books are being literally taken, taken up, you know, out of libraries. Yeah. Out. So I'm glad you think it's any distribution. <laughs> <laughs> oh no no no! But no, I don't. Yeah, but what, remember what I said. I said if somebody says I am not reading this work, then I think the problem is not about the work. But I, I think it's bigger than somebody yeah. saying. Yeah. yeah. I think it's systemic. It's yeah, systemic. absolutely. Yeah. 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 And it's no, it's I'm actually scary. No, 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 no. That's, <laughs> no, 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 no. That. that there's an interesting thing about that that is not it's not a downer it's a it's an existing reality yeah it's an existing reality that says i mean we were talking about this earlier and i said somebody says to you look we don't want you to read we don't want our kids to read this book because it makes them feel bad mm-hmm. <laughs> about themselves yeah. what are you going to do like this is a, but that's a policy that is mm-hmm. policy you know now, it's like we do not want you to read history. That's right. Because yeah. in that history, we don't look so good. We don't look so good. <laughs> <laughs> and that is policy. And a kid says, I went to class and I read this book and I felt bad. Yeah. And that said, ban the book. Mm-hmm. That's policy. That's not, this is not hypothetical. This is like the current existing reality that we're dealing with. So, so yeah. It's not, it's, not a, it's not a pretty scene. But my thing is, 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 is that I know you're doing this, but I'm going to keep putting this thing out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that I think. But to go back to that question, how do you get white people, let's ask it this way, yeah. mm-hmm. to get beyond their own racism yeah. and open out to other cultures and to value it without the direct appropriation yeah. You know, they can value it when they appropriate it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh. <laughs> so I know that I'm going to get in trouble and I'm going to take one or two more questions. If you all promise me that when 10 o'clock hits, we will leave this whole building. <laughs> <laughs> Run. <laughs> so we'll have time to do signings and everything, but by 10 o'clock, when people start saying, let's move, I need you people to move. If, 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 if we can agree on that, I'll take one, maybe two more questions. Yeah? Okay, I'm just going to go ahead first. Thank you both for such an insightful and an inspiring conversation. Um, my question is, when it comes to publishing the black writer or the African writer or the Caribbean writer, we are all <coughs> told there's progress, there's so much progress happening. It's slow, but there's progress. And it, you know, the way Baldwin asks, how much time will it take for your progress? Um, but, and my question is partly to Claudia, when it comes to works by black authors or African writers that tends to define classification, so if you're not working strictly in poetry or fiction, you're working across medium, um, the publishing world is kind of very hesitant to take it unless they like proof of success. You know, um, has a each year published something like this that I've sold? You know, if no one has done that, then they're very hesitant to do that. You know, it's kind of a pre-
prism of the American university academic kind of stuff. So what would kind of be your advice for an African writer who wants to publish work that defies classification and kind of just experiment, you know, play around with, you know, things that Western publishing classifies as magical realism when for us it's just daily lived experiences. How do we go about stuff like that? Well, this is where calling comes into play. It's this idea that you have to wait for somebody else to publish it is not necessarily right. We can start our own publishing houses. You don't get the same kind of distribution. Yeah. You don't get the same kind of um, advances. advances, but you get the work out. And that's how it starts. You know, you, um, communities, you build communities um, where people are not only publishing, they're also reviewing, yeah. they're also giving you platforms to um, read your work. And that, that happens among groups. That's why people, you know, people sometimes poo-poo graduate school or poo-poo writing programs, but what you find in those programs are your people. Mm -hmm. It's like, this is this new made family. Mm -hmm. And poetry movements, they're not just people sitting around talking, they're people who are publishing each other, they're reviewing each other, they're attending each other's readings, they're showing each other's work, they're sharing work, they're the audience until the audience becomes something else. So that's how it starts. You don't necessarily wait. Um, and then you can also look, there you know, there are smaller presses. Yeah, there's other publishing, is that thing that you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, out there that are interested in um, hybrid work. There's people, <coughs> there's an image, there's an, in the state, there's a small press called Image Text. Yeah. And they work with, I, I sometimes teach for them. They work with um, writers who are interested in visual and textual material working together. And that's just a group of photographers and writers. And we meet, it's a lot of fun. And they put out work. The, there's a publishing house called Self Publish, Be Happy. Yeah, <laughs> and it's done by Bruno Chesso, he's in Madrid, and they do fantastic um, um, series. Uh, you should think about going to some of the um, book fairs where they have the smaller press. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anything to add? To no, no, I, I would only say that you know, you, you, you describe something like experimentation and so on and so forth. And experimentation is what I think, I think that there, is a, there is a way in which um, it, it doesn't define definition because you kind of define it, right? Um, and so the question is, how do we, how do you find like, like style work, right? Um, you know that there's an industry that says, does this do, does this, will this sell as well as Adichie, for instance? Well, that's a, that's a whole different discussion. If that's the work you want, if you, if you want to be that, then that's fine. Um, but if you don't, then the question is to find like-minded. So I can talk to poets, for instance, and you say, well, you know, experimental poets and so on, so forth, black experimental poets. Well, I can give you a long list of black experimental poets. You look at where they were published, and you, you see if they'll be interested mm -hmm. in talking to you. You, 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 you see what I'm saying? So um, I, I think you're describing a genuine concern um, about, about the industry of publishing, right? Um, but it's a concern that, that happens for multiple reasons, and it's not necessarily just because of the form that you're using. I wasn't rejected 41 times because my poetry was formally different. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it, there may be other reasons that, that this thing might be going on. And so thinking about that might, might, might also, uh, but I think Claudia's 
idea of the intervention of creating these spaces to make that work happen seems to be um, a thing that is not unavailable, actually. It really is not unavailable. Hello. I'm so sorry. I think that we can't, that, that was our last question. I'm yes, sorry. that's <laughs> right. Please. You've done well. Thank you.